Well, hey gang, welcome back to the channel, and I'm going to be reviewing a power station today. It's been a while since I reviewed an actual power station, it seems like, and the last time I did it, it didn't go so well. So, this is brand new in the box. I haven't opened it up. I want you folks to see what it looks like when it ships to you, the state of charge, all the accessories, all the good stuff, and then I'm going to go into all of my full testing that I do, which typically takes around four or five days to get these things fully tested. But, anyway, this is from Nornven. And it is a 1,408 watt hour lithium iron phosphate power station. It's got a 2,000 watt inverter. It comes in at $1,299, which puts this around 90-ish, 92 cents per watt hour, which is on the high side of power stations in terms of price per watt. So let's get it opened up. Let's get it tested and see if this thing offers anything above and beyond what most power stations do to see if it's worth that price tag. got your fairly small little manual okay so looking good so far just a AC power cord I do not see a power brick yet so it might have an internal brick and this feels very empty what is this this is just a USB-C to USB-C cable in that box It's fairly dense. So here is the unit. Not a bad looking little power station. It does have a lid up top. Let's see what's in it. And nothing. Okay. So it did not come with any type of solar charging cable, any type of DC charging cord that I can see. <laughs> you got your USB-C and your AC charging cable. I guess we just need to turn on either the inverter or the USB-C or the DC buttons so it came shipped at 83 percent i typically like these to be shipped around 50 percent full because you don't want to keep lithium iron phosphate batteries at 100 percent if you don't have to so it looks like the ac charging cord is going to go right here in the front let me plug up to home grid okay so hopefully you can see that is now inputting over 1100 watts 1300 watts 1400 watts wow so this is definitely quick charging i'll need to see if there's a way to limit that or you know if you can do a slow charge because i don't always want to charge at 1500 watts it's just really stressful on the batteries but so i came out to check to make sure if this thing was topped off or not and you can see here i am only at 90 percent capacity with zero watts being input charger is connected so I'm going to tinker around with this a little bit more to figure out why I'm not inputting any more watts into this thing. But Okay, so I figured out the problem. It was the fuse on my extension cord reel that I used that actually tripped. So I had to go reset it. And that's the only problem with these really high-powered charger inverters is because these 1500 watts could easily trip whatever you have it plugged into in your house if you have anything else on that circuit turned on. So just be careful if you are charging this power station at home, it's gonna take 1500 watts and most typical home outlet are rated at 15 amps or around 1800 watts. So if you have anything on that circuit being used and you plug this in, you're likely going to trip a breaker. I finally got the unit charged up to 100% and again, just be careful whatever you plug this into, it can easily trip your breaker. My little hose reel that I have my extension cord to up in the ceiling, I guess only has a 1500 watt max and it kept tripping that breaker. So I had to plug it in to one of my actual outlets in my garage. I did not see any way to limit the amount of charging input, meaning you can't do like a slow charge on this. It's either all or nothing, pedal to the floor in terms of charging this unit. You can adjust the charging rate. It is very, very quiet when it charges. 1500 watts is a lot of juice getting put into this thing and it is very quiet. I did not get my decibel meter out. I've got fans running in the garage. It's very loud in here, just ambiently. My guess is it's probably around 35 to 40 decibels when it's fully charging. I was surprised how quiet it is. But let me show you what's up front and so you can kind of get an idea of what the ports are to see if it's something that might be useful for you. So underneath this little dust flap here is where you're going to have your AC charging cord input. You're going to have, a, appears to be a 5525 input for like a DC type charging uh, apparatus that this does not get supplied with. So typically, you're gonna have a car cigarette style charging cord on one end to a barrel adapter that you could plug in and charge this thing up in your car. 
This Anderson input right here is for your solar, and that is rated at 30 to 60 volts or 400 watts max. And then down here, you're gonna have your standard, you know, 12 volt, uh, 10 amp cigarette style car charging outlet. You're gonna have two 5525 outputs. Then you're gonna have one, two, three USB-A outputs, as well as one quick charge USB-A output. You also have two 100 watt power delivery USB type C's up here. And then down here, you've got your three AC 120 volt receptacles. And then up here is another kind of funny thing. So apparently this unit can be used as a jump starter. It does not get supplied with any type of jumping cables you have to purchase separately. And then this is going to be an expansion battery port, which of course this unit did not get supplied with an expansion battery or expansion battery cables. So I don't have any way to test any of these ports, but I guess if you want to expand on the system, you can. And then on the back, of course, you're gonna have a little light, a couple of different modes, something that we'll probably never use since it's on the back and these things are typically pushed up against in a cabinet or whatever. So I, I don't like it when they put these lights on the back. If you're gonna put a light on a power station, which we don't hardly ever use anyway, put it on the front because this is what you're looking at and this is where you need light. But it does have a light. So that's all your main ports and functions of this power station. A couple of things to note that kind of kind of irritated me a little bit is this is touted to be a jump starter to use as a vehicle jump start in the, in the event your battery's dead and you have this in your car, but you have to purchase your own jumper cables. It's not supplied with this unit. To me, if you're gonna advertise this as being jump ready, jump capable, provide us with the cables, with the cord that we need to use it and don't make us go buy the extra cables. So knock one for that. Uh, two, I don't like the fact that you can't adjust the charging speed. So that, that's a big kind of of a drawback to me as well because I don't always want to charge at 1500 watts because it is damaging to the batteries in the long run. And it doesn't come with any type of solar charging cables on these Anderson inputs. So you're going to have to go buy your own Anderson input to MC4 cord to hook up to solar panels. So I want to test the capacity of this unit. So I do have it charged up to 100%. I've got my DC capacity tester zeroed out and we're gonna let this thing run. And again, this is rated at 1,408 watt hours. This is showing about nine amps. The watt meter on the power station is showing 125 watts. So I'm gonna let this thing run completely dry to see if we can get close to the 1,408 rated watt hours of this power station. So if you look down at the lower left hand number, you'll see 1,089 watt hours. That is the amount of watt hours I was able to squeeze out of this battery during this test. So I was able to get around 77% of the actual rated capacity. So let's give this inverter a shot now. So it is turned on. I've got my multimeter plugged in and no load, nothing running off of this inverter. We're sitting at 112 volts. So this is definitely not a 120 volt inverter, but we're gonna turn this heat gun on and see if I can run this power station at around 15 to 1800 watts for about five minutes. We'll get this thing started. Get it going in slow mode. And that's pulling 563 watts. We're still at 112 volts. Let's crank it up. That's 1200 watts, and surprisingly, we didn't drop down very low. We're at 111 volts now. Let's give it about another 400 watts, I believe. Yeah, that's comfortably right at 1600, 1700 watts, 1780 watts. I'm gonna set my stopwatch. It's already been going for about a minute, but we're gonna let this run for about five minutes. Now I am down to 106 volts on this thing, pulling, we kind of settled down to 1600 watts, but let's check the sine wave on it. And it's a pretty good sine wave. So just a tad bit of dirt in there, but overall I'd say that's a pretty, pretty clean sine wave. The voltage does, does kind of scare me just a little bit, 106.6. Again, pulling around 1,560 watts. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and make sure everything, uh, everything works well. And then we'll see what it takes to actually trip this inverter. Okay, so we've passed over five minutes running around 1,600 watts. Again, 106 volts. So I'm gonna unplug this little heater here. And I can hear that the voltage went up so we're back up to 111 volts now, but 
Let's hook up this 1500 watt heater and see if this will even start it. It shouldn't because it's going to be over 2000 watts, but we'll see what it, we'll see what happens. Okay, that's what's going on. They, these, these power stations now do a thing where they lower the voltage of your devices. So if you have a very voltage specific requirement for a device and it's over 2000 watts, it's gonna lower that voltage. You can see here, we're at 85 volts. So that could be a very damaging to very sensitive electronics, but things like heat guns, it's okay. It just lowers the voltage. Now it does decrease the, the performance of these heaters. However, as you can tell, it keeps them running, but you gotta be real careful with what you plug into them because this power station is just trying to keep these appliances running by lowering the voltage. Yeah, 89.3 volts. So now for the cooler test, and by that I mean, will this power station keep a 12 volt compressor fridge running, let's say overnight, eight hours, 10 hours, however long it is that you sleep? And I'm kind of concerned because in the manual, let me tell you what it says. If no or minimal usage is detected for over six hours, the system will enter idle mode. In idle mode, if no or minimal current is detected for 30 seconds, the output function will be automatically shut down to preserve the battery. So I take from that that this power station is gonna cut itself off if it doesn't detect any power coming from this cooler. Once coolers get up to temperature, they don't use a lot of power. So that compressor might not be running for 30 seconds, this power station is going to shut itself down, at least per the manual, but let's test it out. So, cooler is off. I'm going to plug it into the 12 volt socket. Turn that on. Probably heard the cooler just beep. I'm going to set this to like 50 degrees so it doesn't continually run that compressor. 51 degrees is what the cooler is set at. It is now 9 36 in the morning so i'm going to come back at around seven hours and see if this power station is still running this cooler so here's a great advantage of living in texas in the summer is that this cooler is set to 60 degrees and i think the compressor is having to still almost continuously run just to keep it at that since this garage is almost at 95 degrees in here so this power station has continued to run it and it is 406 p.m so it's been about over seven hours so the only thing I can think of, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this cooler because yes, it, it ran it for over six hours, but I think that compressor was having to run. So the manual says minimal power draw. It doesn't state the exact amount of wattage that this thing has to detect every 30 minutes. So I don't know what that wattage is, but I'm going to use this little LED light, which pulls, I believe around five watts. So this little light right here is pulling five watts of energy. It is, again, 4.06 p.m., so I'm going to see if this thing will continue to run it for six hours. Well, folks, it is the next day. It is 8.15 a.m., and I actually forgot this was running last night. And obviously, this little LED light bulb is still running off of the DC output, so it did not shut itself down after six hours. I would still be a little worried to try to keep a cooler running in your van or your camper, if it's cool outside because that, that compressor is not going to continuously run, and if I'm reading that manual correctly, if this does not get any input after six hours within a 30 minute time frame, it's gonna shut itself off. I couldn't get that scenario to happen here in Texas right now because that cooler does have to at least cut on once every 15 or 20 minutes just to maintain temp. And this five watt LED light bulb apparently was enough wattage to keep this system awake. All right, so to check to make sure that this thing can charge and utilize some of these ports at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my charging cord and that should kick on. There we go. So it's gonna slowly climb up to again around 14 to 1500 watts. 1505 watts. Let me cut on this inverter because I've got my lights connected to it. Okay, lights are on, cut on the USB ports. This light's running, and I just have a little phone charger here. Make sure that it will start to charge my phone. There we go, and we are charging. So now we are only inputting 1,274 watts because of all the other appliances that we are using at the same time. So yes, pass-through charging of course works on this, which, you know, 
in this day and age, every battery station pretty much does. Now this unit does not have a UPS function on it, so we're gonna skip that test. That's all the testing I'm going to do on this battery station. Cut to the chase, guys. I, 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 can't, I cannot recommend this battery station. Um, there's just too many things on it that, that, that either are not there or that just don't work very well or things that I wish worked a little bit differently. And the kicker is this thing is almost a dollar a watt hour, 90 to 92 cents a watt hour. I, I just, I think there's a lot better options out there right now. Um, and let me just go through a few of these um, issues that I've had with it so you get a better idea. One, this is touted as being a jump start capable power station, which is great. They don't give you the jump starting cables. You have to buy those separately, which to me is ridiculous. You shouldn't have to do that if they're advertising this to be able to jump start a vehicle include the cables with the power station. The 77% efficiency rating is one of the lowest ratings I've gotten so far while testing power stations. So to get only a little bit over a thousand watt hours out of a 1400 rated watt hour power station is not very good. I've seen a lot better at a lot lower price point than what this guy offers right here. Um, and then the whole six hour shutdown thing, if it doesn't detect any power or a minimal power, let me know what that minimal power is. That's very important and it's not in the manual. The information booklet just states that after six hours, if it detects no power or a minimum power draw, it will shut itself down. I don't know what that minimum power draw requirement is because I wanna keep my cooler running all night and not have it shut down in the middle of the night and my potential food spoil. Uh, I'm trying to come up with some good things about it. Fast charging, you can charge it up within an hour, which is, which is good. Um, I do wish you could adjust that charging speed though because I don't always want to charge that much juice into this battery. It's, it's very hard on the batteries and if I'm not in a hurry, I wanna charge those batteries slowly to keep this power station running as long as possible. And this does not give you an option to change the charging speed. It doesn't have a UPS feature. It doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can't monitor it from your phone, which isn't a deal killer, but at 92 cents a watt hour, that's an option that I think would be a must have if you're gonna spend that much money on a power station. So yeah, guys, I was really looking forward to, to maybe doing a review on a power station that kind of blew my socks off. I'm, I'm kind of striking over three here on the channel recently on these power stations, but I want you folks to know in case you're looking at this, you know what you're getting yourself into. So, so folks, that's it on this review on this Norvin power station. Till next time, see you soon. Thanks for watching.